We have all been following the case of Christopher Michael Barrios, Jr. in Georgia. This is the young six-year-old boy that was missing for a week, only to be found murdered. Already, new shoot-from-the-hip legislation is being introduced in Georgia because the political sound bites are effective and perpetuate the money trail of legislators operating as a business. There are many elements missing from this story that only a handful of reports dare share with you, the public. First and foremost, let me say how saddened our network, Sozin, is about this tragedy. We're sad because yet another death occurred, and our hearts and spirit are with his family. But we must remind the public about two major points. What happened is not indicative of the majority of those being subjected to this life condition of sex offender label. And what happened to poor Christopher could very likely have been avoided if the representatives and senators had heeded the wise testimony of the offender community a year ago. Had the representatives and legislatures listened to Dr. Jean Abel and Dr. James E. Stark and the other experts who spoke at the hearings last year, Christopher Barrios might still be alive today. Had they listened to the registered sex offenders who spoke at the hearings last year, Christopher Barrios might still be alive today. Had they implemented a risk assessment and a risk level system for all the current registered sex offenders, and not just the new ones after July 1st of 2006, as was recommended to them, Christopher Barrios might still be alive today. Had they listened to the experts in law enforcement and not forced law enforcement to spend all their resources chasing low-risk offenders away from churches, housing, and employment, Christopher Barrios might still be alive today. All the laws and restrictions in the world will not stop someone who wants to offend. The sex offender registry does not make children safer, neither do safety zones. Therapy does. Education does. Had they used common sense in place of political posturing, Christopher Barrios might still be alive today. Because they failed to listen to the experts, because they failed to, to listen to law enforcement, because they were just looking for election year sound bites, the representatives and senators are just as responsible for the death of Christopher Barrios Jr. as the perpetrator. We at Sozin are truly compassionate and empathetic about the fates of Christopher Michael Barrios Jr., Jessica Marie Lunsford, and all the other rare victims of stranger danger. While Adam John Walsh, a victim of a violent crime and not the victim of a registered sex offender, is also in our thoughts, his father and countless others have endeavored to make laws claiming, if we can only save one child, these laws are worth it. The problem is that in attempting to save that one child, they're actually endangering countless children. Christopher Barrios as an example. These very laws were originally constructed to delineate the worst offenders from the nonviolent offenders, so that originally law enforcement, and subsequently you, the public, could be aware of the true dangers. Instead, the state and national registries are chock full of more than 500,000 people today, many of whom are far less important to your safety than the guy next door that smokes anything other than cigarettes. We have taken a great idea, being able to see the true predators, and reduced it to a cash flow process for the states of our country to rake in grant money while they suggest that they are helping you track offenders. But the problem is that these offenders are often the one-time citizens that may have been charged with catch-all offenses that run the gamut from peeing behind the bar at 3 a.m. to having consensual relations with someone two years younger than them when they were 18, and now they're 40. This publicly available registry for you to actually track predators is not at all what it suggests because it's too watered down with nonviolent offenders and even children that have offended. The word sex offender has lost all meaning today and unfortunately later this year someone in your family may have this label applied to them. You need to be much more concerned about the drug dealer or even drug user next door. You need to be 
more concerned about the intoxicated driver on the road. If the registry truly only listed violent offenders, child predators, and also, of course, included offenders of multiple drug or gun violations, then they might be a little more useful. However, even then, the next offense you hear about likely won't come from someone already on such a registry. Most of the people on the registry are trying to restore their lives and become better people. Those few that aren't will do it whether or not they're on any such registry. You need to be much more concerned about the potential for someone you already know to cross an inappropriate boundary with your child. You need to be concerned about our government spending at least as much on sex offender prevention and education as it plans to spend on any new sex offender retribution laws. <clears throat> Do you realize the significant costs involved in current law enforcement of any offenders, much less sex offenders, and that law enforcement agencies can't keep up? Do you realize how much benefit is derived from treatment and education? Do you realize that specifically one year of sex offender treatment costs about one quarter of sex offender incarceration? The hysteria caused by this small handful of violent predator attacks, however tragic, does not justify politicians passing laws that actually put you at greater risk. Christopher Barrios Jr.'s death was completely avoidable if it weren't for his family being forced to move into this trailer park because of a prior residency restriction law in Georgia. Because Christopher's own father was a registered sex offender from 10 years ago and was doing his best to keep within the careful scrutiny of the law, of the law in addition to being a provider for his own family. The boy's mother and grandmother knew they lived in a bad area because they had to and warned him to be careful. They specifically knew Edenfield was a registered sex offender because of the registry. Yet that did not keep this from happening. The residency, the residency restrictions, and all the laws in the world can't keep these rare tragedies from happening. For those of you that think knowing the location of registered offenders in your area will keep you safe, realize that you're in the same boat as Christopher's family because they knew. For those that have checked their local registry, get this, 90% of all new offenses will happen by people that aren't on the registry or subject to any of these harsh laws the politicians want you to think are keeping you safe. These useless laws are only costing you millions of tax dollars while frustrating the very law enforcement agencies that cannot keep up with them. The next time that you hear your local legislator talk about any new law about sex offenders, we at Sozin ask that you make sure you understand the facts about these issues. Be sure to ask how much the new law will cost and whether it can even be implemented. Then ask how it will actually make you safer. Then ask how much money is being spent toward treatment, education, and other prevention programs that do work. Remember, you elect your officials, and they answer to you. Educating yourself is free. Read about scholarly reports and documents published by the United States Department of Justice, the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, and many other professional groups that have researched the facts and try to put an end to these new laws. Read about sex offenders having one of the lowest recidivism rates of any type of criminal offender. Join our discussion groups and learn how our membership of registered sex offenders has a zero recidivism rate. Of course, most of our membership is made up of family members and friends of those being subjected to these ever-changing no-win laws, as well as professionals and other people wishing to stop any offenses, including child abuse. Become a part of the solution, and do not buy into the sound bites of politicians that wish to continue this problem. Many lawmakers believe they need to look tough on crime, but in fact, they must support responsible legislation 
in ways that maximize your tax dollars instead of supporting old mechanisms in the name of protecting the children when in fact these laws do just the opposite. Please visit us at www.sozen, that's S-O-S-E-N, dot info for more information.